Welcome back. In this last lecture of the series, we are going to see that how we can allow the user to enter their cardholder name, the expiration date, as well as a CVV. As soon as we enter this information, the user will be able to look at the information because it will be populated right in front of their eyes on the beautiful display of the card that we have created. The first thing we need to do is we need to create some state variables that can hold the name, the expiration date, as well as the CVV code. All three of them will be string and we can easily create them by creating state properties. Perfect. Now we will need to allow the user to enter name, expiration date, and CVV. I'm going to go ahead and add a text field. But in order to add the text field, I'm also going to wrap the credit card view inside a V stack so I can add multiple controls in the vertical stack. Command click, and I can go ahead and select embed in V stack. Perfect. The UI is not really going to change because we haven't really done anything. We just place this into the V stack. Now we can go over here and add our text field control. So the first control I'm going to add will be allowing us to take the name from the user. So let's go ahead and add this. A simple text field control. Let's go ahead and style this a little bit better. I'm going to select everything and control I. Okay, so we can see our first text field control being displayed. We can use the same exact code to add for the expiration date. And there we go. And make sure that this is also organized right, so control I. One thing to note over here is that the text field, whatever I'm typing, is going to go into the name state property wrapper or the state property. And for the expiration date, it's going to go into a bindable property called expires. And both of these properties we have declared on the top along with the CVV code, which we will tackle later on. So now we are typing in the name and we are typing in the expiration date. We want to pass this information to the front of the credit card, which is right over here. Right now you can see that the credit card front is not really taking any arguments. We can go ahead and jump into this implementation and change this to allow us to pass in the expiration date and also to pass in the front of the card, meaning the name. I'm also going to change the preview so that I can see the front of the card because we are working on the front of the card. So I'm just going to say credit card front and I'm just going to pass in the credit card front. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And now let's go ahead and find our implementation for the credit card front, which is right here. I'm going to go ahead and create two different properties in the credit card front. One will be allowing us to pass in the name and the other one will be allowing us to pass in the expiration date or expires. Now we will go ahead and send this information into the preview. So you can see that over here, I do have to specify something. There we go. And also value for the expires, which we can simply say whatever we want over here. There we go. Now we still have to use these properties, the name and the expire, so that it can be displayed in our credit card. So let's find a place where we actually use the credit card name, which are the name of the person, which is right here. And for the expiration date, which is right there. Let's change the name. Instead of the name, we are going to just say name variable or the name property. And for the expiration date, we are just going to change this to expires. Perfect. Now, we still have one problem. In our content view, we are not really passing anything over here. So I can simply go ahead and say that pass in the name and pass in the expires, which is also expires. Let's go ahead and build this. And let's go ahead and refresh our preview so that we can see 
these values being passed. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and run this. Now, as soon as we start typing something in the name text field, we should be able to see that it is passing. So you can see that as soon as I type something out, the credit card is being filled out. Perfect, so this part is done. Now let's move to the CVV code. For the CVV code, we first will start with creating the actual CVV text field, which I can simply copy out this one. And I can say CVV. And this value is going to go into CVV. Okay, that's there. But one of the things that the CVV code is going to do is whenever we select, whenever we click on this CVV text box or the text field, the card should rotate, allowing us the opportunity to enter the CVV code as well as allowing us the opportunity to, to look at the CVV code that we are typing. So how do we do this? Well, the text field does contain some other closures that you can implement. And one of them is the editing. So I'm just gonna pass in something over here. I'm just gonna call it editing changed in. And if the editing is changed, this is just a Boolean value. This means that the person has changed the editing, else we are going to do something else. Let's go ahead and build our application. You'll see that right now it's not working because we still have to implement the commit part of it. So let's go ahead and call it on commit. On commit will be nothing. Great. And we still have to, there we go, we still have to do the implementation for the editing change. So what should happen when we are changing or when we are clicking on this CVV text box? Well, the whole card should rotate. We already have the rotation code on the on tap gesture on the card. We will remove that. We don't need that. But we can actually go ahead and use the same exact code right over here. And for the else, it's going to do the same thing. Now, since we're repeating the code over here again and again, it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, it doesn't really matter if the editing has actually changed. If it's true, then you're doing this. If it's false, you are doing the same exact thing. Then why can't we just do the same thing without checking the condition? So what if we simply remove all of this stuff, the condition, and simply just whenever the editing is changed, let's, let's do that because we were doing this either for true or false anyways, right? So we should be able to just do that regardless of what we are trying to do. After making these changes, make sure that we remove the on tap gesture on the card. Unless you want to just keep it, that's also fine. If you tap on the card, it will also rotate. So maybe you want to keep it, maybe you want to remove it. It's completely up to you. So what we have done is that we have added the editing change event and whenever the editing changes, uh, we just fire the same animation again. So let's go ahead and run this animation. I'm gonna run the preview and I'm gonna type in the, user na or the name of the user and the expiration date and the CVV code. As soon as I click on the CVV text box, it rotates and it allows me to write CVV code. But obviously the code is not updating. You can see it's not updating. We still have to work on that. If I click somewhere else, well, it goes back. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so the last part is that for us to update the actual CVV code. We are already capturing the CVV code in our state variable called CVV. But we are not really passing this to the credit card back component. Let's go ahead and check out our credit card back component and go ahead and implement a CVV property, which will be string. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace one, two, three with CVV. 
So whatever the person actually types in. Now we can go back to our content view and we can pass in the CVV, which is stored in the state, which is CVV. And that should hopefully do it. Let's go ahead and run the application and see that if we can rotate the card and fill out all the information also. So let's go ahead and start with filling out the front of the card with the date and the expiration date over here and the CVV. Let's go ahead and type in out some CVV and you can see that the CVV is now being typed out. Pretty cool, right? As soon as we type it out somewhere else or we click on focus on some other text field, it goes back and shows you the front of the car. Pretty cool. If you like to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a course on Swift UI. It's called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. You can see that this is close to a 20 hour course. So it's pretty much covered everything you ever imagined about Swift UI. It starts from the very beginning and then it can take a deep dive into many different concepts, including property wrappers, core data, Surf UI, recipes and animation on all devices, and even a huge section on Surf UI for iOS 14. I'm also going to show you how you can integrate with pedometer and HealthKit data and even draw charts using Surf UI. So this is the complete course on Surf UI. I would say if you are interested in this course, then check out the YouTube description and you will be able to find many different courses that I have created. Uh, and I would really appreciate if you try out different courses that I have. But the best way to get these courses is by checking out the YouTube description. You will find the links, click on the link, and you'll be able to get these courses. Thank you so much and enjoy the video.